So Jeskai mutate combo. Um, this is a combo where you kind of look at it and people go, oh, well, how does this go infinite? And the answer is we're not going infinite. This is a deck that is, it's a sufficiently large enough finite, generally speaking. So the basic idea revolves around uh, Vodrock along with Open the Omen Path Seer. So Vodrock here says, when this creature mutates, you may cast target non-creature spell with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its cost. And then Open the Omen Path Seer is an instant that says, add two mana of any one color and two mana of any other color. Spend this mana to cast a creature or enchantment spell only. So the basic idea here is with Open the Omen Path in your graveyard, Vodrock, unlike effects like Snapcaster Mage in the past, does not exile the card when you recast it. It goes back to your graveyard. So you can recast the same card multiple times. So the basic idea is you mutate a bunch onto the same creature with Vodrock, recasting open the omen paths each time. And with things like Baby Godzilla, Dreamtail Heron drawing you cards, and Cloud Piercer drawing you cards, you kind of churn through your deck finding more mutate cards. And Cub Warden is the one of the ways in which we actually close out. While we're mutating, flashing things back, we make a bunch of kitty cats with the Cub Warden here. And then we've got a Doom Scar Titan that can come in at the end and give everything one attack in haste. So the, the basic loop is you get this in your graveyard, you mutate. Vodrek onto something, you, you mutate through your deck drawing cards with these and this, you make a bunch of 1-1s, one and then you mutate this, give them 1-0 oh, and haste and then attack. Um, we also have some copies of See the Truth here as another uh, card that's great to recast with Vodrock because you get to draw all three cards if you Vodrock it back and you could Vodrock it back multiple times. So like this deck also has, this is my favorite kind of combo deck because this deck is also just a fair combo backup or a fair mid-range backup plan, right? We could just like mutate onto things and like play see the truths naturally without like going going full hog, basically. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see if this is reasonable or if it ends up being a little bit too clunky to be competitive or not. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get to do the thing at least once or twice while we play. Yes, there, there have been variations of this deck since the standard format started. And I think um, I think the variation with the black creature that drains when it mutates is much worse because that card's a lower individual card quality card. So this deck, while the mutate cards are definitely a little bit underpowered in general, um, the mutate cards that this build is playing tend to be a little bit stronger on average than that one is. Hey, Chris, thanks for the eight months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, we changed, we changed formats. Wait, wait. So I know, I know we were just playing historic with those cards. We are no longer playing historic. We are we are back back to standard here now. Contrary to popular belief, I don't actually have every foil that exists on Magic Arena. So I'm this might have a foil, but I just don't have actually all of them, believe it or not. Except a collected conjuring deck. I don't think so. I don't think that card's particularly playable. I think I'm just full full mulliganing here. I think we're just gonna wheel. And I'll, and I'll do it again, I swear. Hey, Palmer. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. An insane monkey. Thanks for the five months. Welcome back.
Jeff's gonna feel real silly when my collected Kaiju deck goes one, two, and hoots. Something like that. This is red, red, and then blue or white. So we'll play another red here. This needs white, white. What's our best draw next turn? Probably like a, uh, well, they didn't make us discard. Interesting. Our best draw next turn is probably a, uh, a thing that we could mutate onto this, a C dash octopus. Really surprised it didn't make us discard to, uh. What's it called? Fill their graveyard for rank. or for Kraxo. This is probably a bad matchup for us, if I had to guess. feel like I'd much rather be in a spot where we're racing as opposed to our opponent being able to, uh... Our opponent being able to, like, super interact with us here. Yeah, Vodrock recasting Awakening is sweet for sure. We're just gonna be much too slow here, though, unfortunately. I'm not dead yet. They're dead to a stiff breeze here, but we're not dead on board. Thanks for the heads up on the stream title. It doesn't look like it's... Yeah, something, something's broken on Twitch's end. It's not updating when I click the update, but I'm actually just gonna concede this matchup. This is a do the thing deck more than anything, and red black's not super popular. We're almost, we're almost at the rank floor. I don't think that, uh, I don't think that matchup we're capable of winning. Sometimes you get Eldred. I mean, to be fair, I think our deck's probably pretty reasonable against a lot of these adventure decks. It's, it wasn't, it wasn't the Eldrain part of the opponent's deck so much as it was the, uh, the plethora of interaction that they had. Yeah, a lot of, and I, I've talked about this on stream before, but a lot of the Naya piles have moved away from having the ability to kill their opponent to being greedy and just like playing more ways to draw cards, which I think is really good for decks like what, what this is doing. Mopey, Mopey mid-range is exactly what this style of deck is looking to prey on.
Get a Rimrock Knight. Stomp, perhaps. Step on me, Daddy. Want to dig for our lifelinker next turn? We're bottoming everything here other than omen paths next turn. Take four new ones. And by that I mean Dynacleave. That's how this works. No, I don't I don't want to get rid of the omen paths. I'm taking four new ones. Counted, counted correctly. Well, if we can dodge a cleave, we can dodge a ball. Then we might we might get to do some stuff next turn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I went to click on the gear to make sure I went to click on the gear to make sure uh auto ordered triggered abilities wasn't connected, and I accidentally I play arena on window mode and actually clicked the X on the window. Chat, I think there's a chance our deck is bad. I think, I think there is a chance that our deck is not very good. Okay, so pretty sure, I don't think we need to cut the entirety of the combo, but I think we want to cut, I think we want to cut the part of the thing that does the combo finish, like just making a bunch of lifelink tokens should be sufficient. I think. You gave my opponent permission to put a bunch of good cards in their deck, chat. Prefer the green variation of this deck over the white one. Take a 10 minute break for telling me my deck is wrong without, uh, without telling me why it's wrong. Remember, you are always welcome to give constructive, specific feedback on this channel, but just saying this deck's worse than this other variation is not not constructive and not actionable always happy to have a discussion not happy to have you come in here and drop your pants and take a dump on something someone submitted honestly you probably just cut the see the truth some thanks for the follow me i'm gonna i'm gonna let you in on a dirty little secret too the green version also not very good. That's, that's my favorite part. As someone who's like played a ton of B-list magic decks, whenever, just like without fail, when you talk about why the B or D or C, whatever letter grade you want to give the deck that's not tier one, with, without fail, there's always someone that's like, but Jeff, you're playing the wrong version of the deck list that never does well in a tournament. No, Jeff, uh, trust me, I I have the version that's really good that nobody else has ever played. If you just play the correct version of the bad deck, you will do so much better. Just like everybody else that's never placed in a tournament with it. I 
I'm just I'm just looking to do the thing, chat. I'm just I'm just looking to do the thing. I want I want to mutate a bunch and make a bunch of one ones and maybe give them haste. I don't even have to give them haste. I'd settle for making a bunch of one ones. Sure, you said they preferred it. You want to be, you know what? Or take a time out for being pedantic. You're right. They technically didn't say it was better. They just said they preferred it with no discussion of why they preferred it. You are, you are actually correct that that is what happened. And again, the reason why I don't like comments like that in my chat is they're just not actionable, right? They're just not like, like that, that, if your intention is just to state your preference without telling us why, why you put it in chat? Like, if, if you weren't going to have a discussion to begin with, you shouldn't mind taking a break from being able to talk. All right, are we, are we playing this? I think so. It's a little scary. All of our plays kind of suck into Extinction Event. I guess this also isn't good against uh, Shadow's Verdict either. like I'd be really surprised if our deck is capable of beating anything other than mopey mopey mid-range decks that don't really interact with us the fact the fact that this archetype the fact that this archetype is is uh the your creatures dodge most of Naya's removal is probably what makes it reasonable there but against things with black removal I feel like we just get dominated Yeah, we have things like Selfless Savior that could like kind of maybe work out. In fact, maybe maybe I'm supposed to play this untapped to have Selfless Savior here with Cub Warden. Didn't didn't matter shit. What? Selfless Savior is evolving. So when this mutates, we get instant or sorcery back. We don't currently have any of those. C Beyond. C Beyond would be a sweet, sweet drop. C Beyond and Devadrak. Our opponent can escape shift chat. Escape shift, escape shift is lethal. I've got a couple of disputes and I've got an negate and it looks like again, we're just looking to pivot post board here into being something a little bit more fair. I like take out the actual full combo finish and like get these in here to grind a little bit. Selfless Savior isn't even really good here, right? Because, like, just have a bunch of exile effects. Like, stop some of their removal, but not, not the sweepers, which is unfortunate. 
It's always kind of, always feels kind of awkward to me. They like put an effect like Selfless Savior into a standard format and then like print all these sweepers that sidestep it. I guess? It's a bit much to expect one little doggo to save someone from an extinction event. That's fair. That's fair. He's trying. He's trying his best. I be I believe in him. All right. Just like tap out for a cultivate next turn. No, don't you worry. Disruption me. Okay, good. To cast your cast your omen. Cast cast your cultivate now. My cast cultivate opponent. My dojo does not contain fear chat. There is no there is no room for fear in my dojo. Hey, Kavu Lord, thanks for the follow. This is gonna be a hell of a heartless act. Yep. <laughs> you're not, you're not wrong. We, un so we unfortunately need two omens in the graveyard here in order to cast it twice. Because in magic, when a card changes zones, it's a new instance of that card. So the second one's just not gonna do anything here, unfortunately. Oh, that's super awkward. Should I have made white at some point? Probably. Oh, you know what? I was stacking my triggers wrong, right? I should definitely, I should definitely have been making mana after after I saw, yeah, I should draw before I choose bit, bit, colors mana to make. All right, omen paths, omen paths. Are we doing it, chat? I think we might be doing it. I came in late and I'm afraid to ask what's going on. I'm having fun, chat. We're storming off, okay?
Hey, it's gonna be really sad when they Doomblade the stream here on in response here. Should I... So I have plenty of mana at this point. Should I target a Valakut Awakening with one of these? I feel like I should, right? Just to like try and make sure I don't brick off. Enchantments with this mana, we can cast the skulls, chat. Wait, does mutate work from hand? Cast a spell for its mutate cost. No, we can totally, we can totally mutate. Look at this, look at this, poggers. How very poggers, chat. I think we're supposed to Valakut again here. I think we have enough mana at this point. to go to the bathroom are we on the same turn still of course we're on the same turn still come on now oh sweet there's another vodrock okay Is this turn four? This is turn four. Okay, and now we can Vodrock. Oh, you know what? Did I board out our one haste creature? I think I, I always do that chat. I expect we're not gonna combo. And then I boarded out the one thing that gave haste, didn't I? We're gonna deck ourselves before we can kill them, before we can kill them like this though, right? Can we 20 them with just the bird? I don't think so. Where does our hand, where does our hand end and the game board begin? Nobody knows. Oh, I forgot to play the other selfless pup. When the mutate stack looks like a trade binder. <laughs>
All right, so we'll we'll make sure to never board out the haste monster again. If I would have had a haste monster, we would have killed them. So if I if I had, yay, we didn't get punished. All right, good. Where are you? Where are you, haste monster? Doomscar Titan, I love you, and I promise to never leave you at home again. Dear, dear Doomscar Titan. See, chat, at least I can count this as a successful run. We, did, we accomplished the thing. When people ask what the thing is, that that is what you're trying to do. You can do that as early as turn four. Is Porky Parrot a better finisher than Doomscar Titan? <laughs> Uh, I don't know that you actually get 20 mutations on a thing. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you could you could do it turn three because of um baby baby Gzilla, right? Do baby Gzilla and an omen pass, like baby G and an omen pass, sure. Baby G. Baby G in the house, chat. No! You sit on a throne of lies, opponent! Give me, give me back my Vodsrock! My poor, my poor Vodsrock. Skulls actually seem super reasonable here. Look at this. Look at this ugly card, chat. This isn't a Rodan Titan Winged Fury. It is a god of lies. A god of ugly, hideous lies. We just pass here. And we'll plan to Rodan with Negate up next turn. I might just end step this C Dasher, actually. Yeah, I think that's my plan. We'll just like loop this into play here. I don't have an omen paths in sight, anyways. I got to get Shark Typhoon shit. Ah, just to remove a spell. Okay. They have counter spells in against me too. I guess Mystic Dispute's pretty reasonable. A lot of my cards are blue. Oh no! Shit! It's the post days land drop of shame. Oh. No. To be fair, I wanted to be able to play two lands off of my showdown. So like I kind of had a reason for what I was doing there, but at the same time, feels bad, man. I would have pridefully held that land. <laughs> Ooh. Omen of the sea, omen of the sea. Do 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 Scale of one to dead. Where's the apex of thunder at here? What are you thinking? Not dead yet. Did you? 
Yeah, C Dasher on Vodrock here threat it threatens to flash back and negate here at instant speed, so that's gas. Alright, I mean cue the carnival music, I guess. Pamoin, thank you for continuing your sub, I appreciate it. Now, we're pretty likely to brick here, chat. Never, never tell me the odds indeed. Man, getting getting got by one ofs in an 80 card deck always feels so much worse than getting got by one ofs in a in a 60 card deck. It's big big feel bads, man. I suppose I suppose they could have had a removal spell too and made us equally sad. We did at least get to combo one time. Even if even if I did forget the haste creature. That's fine. We still won that game. Come on, give me a Naya opponent that's just gonna like mope around and die while we do our thing. This deck isn't actually about playing magic with your opponent, chat. It's about having a captive audience while your opponent has to sit there and stew while you do your thing. So that's the that's the secret of decks like these. Smell that chat? Smells like Naya. Opponent made the mistake of wanting to play magic. We're innocent in all of this. <laughs> mm. And like, if they're, okay, so something to note here, this opponent is not playing the Wellspring, so they could theoretically, they could theoretically be, um, our opponent could theoretically be, uh, be on Ember Cleave here. Nice. They have, if they have cleave, they have a chance. Oh, you know what? I need to draw land now though, right? Because I used my omen paths. Yeah, maybe using my omen paths this turn was wrong. Oh, 
Soul Mutate is one cheaper. Yeah, you got me. You understand. Yeah, like, the stat line on this card is part of... Part of why it's so slick, right? Like, you look you look at this, and this is, uh... This is a 3-5. It doesn't die to Giant Slayer, and it definitely doesn't get stomped. Oh, it is double red. You're right. I need, I need a double white for Cubby Bear. Ooh, that's terrifying. All right, red source, red source, red source. We have, uh, we have a puppy, puppy dog. Oh, but they're gonna get to, uh, they're gonna get to step on the dog and then take down the Cub Warden, right? Make one of these indestructible because they're going to kill the Cub Warden regardless. The kind of sweet part here is if we draw a red source, we're not just dead. No, that spells an instant, Ninja Dave. If it wasn't an instant, we would have just sacrificed it in response to the stomp. Um, if we draw a red source... Vodrock flashes back, see the truth, and we could gas back up and get back in this game potentially. Feels, feels bad to lose our cubby bear, but we're not we're not out of it yet, chat. We're not out of it yet, chat fam. Do you, do you see the truth, chat? I see the truth. Is there anything that punishes this attack? Don't believe so, right? Want I get my lifelink in? I'm aware Sentinel has reach. It was a 2-3. If I wouldn't have used my omen path so aggressively earlier, we could have won this. We would have uh we would have comboed off this game. We're probably just like drawing three cards again next turn, right? We just like Cub Warden draw three again, trying to get set up to combo down the line. Was giving everything one extra attack lethal? I didn't count. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they'd block one plus seven of these is six, twelve. No, they'd be they'd live on two. 
Plus, they could stop something technically here with the mana from these, so... I should have- I should have stopped to count there. After- counting after the fact means our play was correct, but... Why couldn't Pupper save the Cub Warden? Because Calibra Takedown was an instant Greeny T, and they stomped my Selfless Savior. So if I went to Indestructible the Cup Warden, they would take it down in response. They, they, they played well and instigated killing my savior. Man, bricking, bricking on another mutate threat here feels real bad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did we mulligan to five this game? That's why these are here, right? We mulligan to five? Uh, audio bugs. Oh, Temple Scry Molta 6. Yes. All right, well, we really need to draw a card that mutates next turn. Dear Magic Arena, how much do I have to pay for an eye that tells me tells me what damage I'm going to? This is 10, 14, I'm gaining six. It's fine. That's good glitch. That is not. That's not the mutate card I wanted for Christmas. I think I, I think I hang tight for the time being and hold this in my hand to loot through. I don't think I'm supposed to play out another BBG Zilla here. I think I'm just supposed to pass. Just like hope to draw something that mutate next turn and go from there. It could be right to play the second one because of the cost discount too, though. I'm a little annoyed with myself that I used my omen path too early this game and ended up uh, possibly losing because of it. The Calibra takedown was very good for the opponent. Only, only a couple of mutations, just one. Two, two, technically, there's technically a token at the bottom of the stack. Yeah, like, the size of these cards on my 27-inch screen is small. Like, imagine this on your cell phone, right? Yep, the audio levels being imbalanced is also a real thing. Good afternoon, Mitchell. Am I dead in the air? Not yet. We have nine coming across in the air. Ten. 
10 coming across in the air. Almost out of mana here, so I don't believe we're dead this turn. So we got another draw to mutate thing. Uh, in terms of performance, I was actually pretty surprised at how well things ran on the phone. I played I've played a number of games on on Arena's mobile client, and while board states like this definitely still suck like I expect them to suck, the performance on the client itself actually surprised me. I guess I should technically stack all of these in the TT because then I get the extra life link, right? Oh, I missed blocking this one. Whoops. There, because there were so many elements on the screen, I missed blocking this one. We should be at 20. I don't think it matters. We need, we're, either, we're either gonna draw a mutate card and go off next turn or we're gonna die. Holy crap, that's a good one. I like the way you'll do that right there, right there. L U. Okay, so mutates, return it instead of sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. So I want this one back to my hand, and this one, this one is getting cast directly. So this will draw three. Yeah, we're not dead. We're not just dead. Oh, are we just dead? Because I can't, I can't mutate for two, right? I don't have any things that mutate for just two. Yeah, I, I don't have, I don't have blue mana. Yeah, okay, so I made a couple of decisions that meant we lost that game. If I would have played the other baby Godzilla out the previous turn, we'd have been okay there. And if I would have, um, if I would have, uh, been less aggressive with my Omen Pass, we would have been okay there. Omen Pass first would let you get the second blue. Omen Pass mana can only be used to cast creature and enchantment spells for people wondering why I did not cast Omen Pass before, before casting my cantrip. Damn, damn magic arena not letting me cheat. The worst. We had two mana left over, right? Neither of which was blue, Kaker. Omen Paths is three mana, correct. Yeah, if I would have if I would have played the land of the baby Godzilla out the turn before, the, the mutate card that was exactly on top on top of our deck would have rewarded that, but that was only a one of, so I don't know that we're supposed to play to that being on top of the deck. Hey, Brad, thanks for the 15 months. Welcome back. I think we keep this, right? Just like has, has all of our colors. 
We draw, we draw a different third land, we get to Valakut and cycle through. about patient so much as um i i thought we were going to be able to kill them fairly with cub warden which is why i used the omen paths to get more cub warden tokens early and then that ended up not being the case guy under or overestimated our fair plan Good for an untapped land tier that's a pile of trash. I guess we'll take this. Listen, chat. I read... I read a Reddit thread on the Magic Spike subreddit from the start of the season, and it had a lot of upvotes talking about how this deck was very real. And why, why would a deck that's not competitive have a bunch of upvotes on the competitive magic subreddit? Come on now. This is, this is the best deck no one is playing. PK Jeff, thank you for the two entire years. It has felt longer because the last year was like 12 years. Good to, good to see you back again. All right, Gas Wheel of Fortune. Going on, V-Man. Good afternoon. Correct. Yes, that's that's exactly correct, Big Jody. And people talking about that, I skipped. I like at the start of the season, I skimmed through a bunch of threads there and other places, like looking for deck ideas. And like the fact that people are like so adamant on that on that sub that like this deck could be real. It's like, come on, like can't you just like accept that like this deck is sweet and it's gonna do a sweet thing, but like it's good and is gonna do a sweet thing is very different than this deck is competitive. People, people get so attached to their their pet ideas. I don't, I don't know why. Like people, people that self-identify as competitive players, they're just like they can't allow themselves to have fun playing the game. So like the idea that someone would imply that like the deck that they like is anything less than super competitive was just very offensive. Yeah, yeah. Like if you enjoy decks like this, there's nothing wrong with that. But just like acknowledge it for what it is. Just be like, yeah, this deck is bad, but it's sweet. I love playing it. That's great. That's a great way to play Magic. Magic, Magic's a great game because it lets lots of different people play it lots of different ways. I think we've died, chat. I think, our, I think the one matchup that seemed like it could be winnable for us does not seem that way. Sort of like Kiki Cord? Yeah, Kiki Cord was really bad. There is a reason why I was one of the only people that ever put up consistent results with Kiki Cord, and part of the reason why I had consistent results was I just played a ton of events. Like, if your deck is bad and you play in a ton of tournaments with it, you're eventually going to spike a number of them. They have a uh, takedown here as well. Take down like actually pushes lethal this turn. Yeah, they do. It's exactly exactly a 10 ball. Uh Ellie, Ellie to Ellie's credit, usually doesn't play weird combo decks. He's usually like big mana style decks. Ellie plays like Tron and Ramp decks. I don't think, I don't think weird weird combo is really his thing. Not, not at least that that I've thrown him when we were traveling to play on the tour bunch. And Golos, Golos is what uh, Golos style decks are like. When I think when I think Ali and Drazi decks, I think like Golos. That's like that's like Ali's Ali's invitational card. <laughs> Just like ramps you and generates generates greed as you go along.
At least we'll always have that one game against Sultai. We'll always have that one game against Sultai together. Chat, let's, let's slam our head against like one or two more matches here at this. See if we could do the thing, but... I think the the black the version with the black mutate card is much worse. Like this this deck's already playing some stinkers. The version with the black mutate card has like really unplayable cards in it. Ah, the old sit in the queue for 60 seconds then get the draw screen. At least the click to continue works now. You used, used to have to restart the client at that screen when it happened. Okay. Got a pupper. They're playing Wellspring. Hopefully they're playing the, uh, hopefully they're playing Naya here. We'd love to see it, chat. Okay, that's a baby Gzilla. Things are coming up. Millhouse, chat. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh we're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Take my hands. We'll make it, I swear. So next turn, we go baby Gzilla plus selfless savior. And then turn four, we pippity pop off, hopefully. Is there a combo with Herald Unites the Elves? Yeah, it could technically put the Changeling card into play, which lets you loop, loop copies of it, I think, and deck yourself. I, I don't know exactly what you do once you deck yourself. Yeah, more right the Frost. Except it's legendary. Yeah, so you get you get two Morite the Frost in your bin. Oh, Thassa's Oracle at the end of it. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you get you Harold Harold Unites White Castle into double frost. Alright, hopefully they're not gonna get another turn to use these cards. You know, it might actually be right here. So... It might actually be right... Yeah, I, I think based on the way I drew here, I think we actually just draw three with this, then plan to combo next turn. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I agree, Duck Doo Little. How does, how does this tire spinning end? Oh, it ends like that. Got it. I guess they could step on Vodrick twice here, but I've got I've got good boys to protect it, right?
swing low, cat chariot. Come along to carry me home. This deck could technically play Oracle as its as its final win con too, huh? Good, some funny thought. So with a second open the omen paths in hand, and this having a baby G Zilla underneath it, we might be flashing back to draw three again next turn. To start, depending on what we loot into. Yeah, I think bricking on the mutate card here means I'm drawing three. Drawing four, technically. The truth, the truth is out there, sheeple. Wake up. You just got to come and see the truth. Okay, and this requires second red, right? So now we're, now we're good to go. Because now I get to go, okay, mutate onto you. Flashback two spells. Okay, so they they're they're dead at this point. It's gonna take it's gonna take me some game actions, but our opponent has died. Those of you that are unsure how that's going to work, sit a while and listen. It's like when you're trying to start an older car with your combo. Come on, baby, start. Come on! You just gotta, you just gotta pull the ripcord on the lawnmower one more time and it's gonna pop right off for you, Chad, I promise. To be fair, Mana Morphos wouldn't actually be very good because this mana only casts enchantments and sorceries. We actually need to draw three more here. I need I need to find a our white mutate card sooner rather than later here. Yikes. If we don't draw our white mutate card soon, we could actually, maybe we should have a Thassa's Oracle in this deck, cause it's like technically possible that like we could deck before we get enough tokens to kill them. All right, there's, there's my cubby bears. All right. So yeah, you just gotta think happy thoughts, okay? I'm actually gonna decline this because I because we drew these, I don't wanna do that. So the way the way we finally win is Cubby Bear, Cubby Bear makes a bunch of tokens. And then the what's it called comes into play and makes them all hasty. And to be fair, the open the omen path can also give them extra attack, so we should be okay here. Yeah. yeah with, the, with the omen pass having an option to give extra attacks, we should be okay. Twenty twenty three cards in the deck, chip. Who's excited to play this on their cell phone?
What do you think the opponent's up to right now? I think they're having a good time. If my opponent wasn't having fun, they'd concede. So I can I can only assume that my opponent is having a good time. This is, for chat, for my opponent, it's basically like they're watching on Twitch. It's basically like they're watching on Twitch like all of you at home. I think they're dead, right? I didn't I didn't math, but I believe this is lethal. The giant the giant also gives plus one. Now would be a great time for Watsy to ask if they enjoyed their game of magic. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Uh, I frequently listen back to my stuff with some consistency, Stiggy, and the RTX voice only only filters when I get real pitchy. So it's it's more than fine. You probably you probably don't want to hear me shriek into your headphones anyway, so in a in a way, RTX voice is working exactly as it's intended. Willem, thank you for the 33 months. Welcome back. Ripsy, good afternoon. See, Leroy Jenkins there in chat knows all about being loud while playing computer games. They're rushing, they're rushing right in chat. How old is that meme at this point? Is that meme old enough to drink? When did World of Warcraft come out, chat? Someone make me feel bad. How old, how old is World of Warcraft? 2004. Oh, that's that. They can't even vote yet. World of Warcraft can't even vote yet. Look at that. It ain't old. Perfect. I would like to think our opponent was so impressed with our combo that they instead elected to let it let us win two games with it. Nope, they just wanted to give us the play for a second game in a row. Got it. Untap land? Ooh, Vajrak. My Google search says the original Leroy Jenkins video is in 2005. Yeah, I believe that. Listen, chat, this is the internet. Hearing 2005 sounds like something that my mental agrees with, and because I agree with it, I in no way, shape, or form need to fact check or validate that it's legitimate because it feels right. Oh, 
Well, that's rude. Alright, do we make some kitty cats, chat? I think we make some kitty cats, huh? full combo there. We were just going to make two cats and attack for four. I, was, I wasn't even combo killing you, opponent. Come back. Come back. I just wanted to draw a card. Opponent's just like, I've had enough of this shit and I'm going home. Damn it, chat. I need, we need higher stakes on the ladder so that way when we get to combo people, they feel compelled to sit there and wait. This, this looks like a combo deck, chap, but it's secretly a prison deck. It's a prison deck looking to hold your opponent hostage while you do your thing and make them watch. Mythgard at two. Yeah, maybe another match or two. Or technically, I was going to... My, my schedule has Mythgard starting an hour ago, but we've had a bunch of people from Magic Sermon in a little bit longer. This deck, this deck hasn't been good, but it's also been funny. How do you find this deck so far? Yeah, there's no way this deck is competitive, Silver. If this if this archetype was gonna be competitive, it would have. It would have shook out that way already. You're just like, you just like don't beat. You're probably competitive against the Naya decks. You just like don't beat interaction is the problem. Hey, what's going on, ballpark? Life is life is swell. You know, aside from the whole pandemic thing, we'll just pretend that doesn't exist. But aside, pandemic aside, I'm doing, I personally am doing well. Oof, oof. Oof, deep. Um, might be in for an untapped land. Ah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take the land. Uh, keeping the land lets me keep, lets me play Valakut Awakening as a spell. I think it is a fine deck to have a lot of fun with. What's going on, Slam Dunks? Baby Gzilla in the house, chat. Now, this is Teamer Adventures, so we have to worry about uh, Disputes, Sought, Cummings, and Brazen Borrowers here. So I imagine that we're going to get systematically dismantled. This was not the Vodrock I wanted for Christmas. If we had Vodrock there, we could have potentially comboed them. How do you compare it to Paradox Engine combo? Uh, the Paradox Engine combo in Historic actually felt pretty reasonably competitive. A lot, a lot more consistency there. The fact the fact that the Paradox Engine combo doesn't rely on things that die to Doomblade is a big deal. That deck also didn't feel amazing against removal, but like your 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 combo getting interact with via via just random removal spells means that lots of people can interact with you consistently. Is the, is the toughest part slash sell or slash whatever you want to say. Oh 
no, chat. I ran out of my favorite peanut butter snack. That's so sad. What, what will I do without any more Nature Valley Krispy Creamy wafer bars? This stream is in no way sponsored or endorsed by Nature Valley, but Nature Valley, if you're out there, it certainly could be. Let's talk. I've got a basket of other snacks, Chad. I'll make do with the other less delicious snacks like some kind of peasant. Okay, so this, so this is an extra turn. Oh man. I punted, this could have been, I could have mutated onto here. That's unfortunate. I get sponsored from anyone who would I choose to give you money? I don't know, some type of, some type of food place that I like their snacks from. Just, I just want sponsors that feed me, Scruff McGruff. Feed me, feed me delicious food. Isn't that all we want in life chat? We just want to subsist on delicious food. Zen Wizard, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this afternoon. Yeah, any of the, any of the food places I eat, Chipotle, Portillo's, all, all excellent choices. Listen, chat, the city where I lived in was recently named one of the happiest places to live in America. And it also has the most restaurants per capita of almost anywhere in the country. And I am confident that those two things are related to each other. Food, food is delicious. Beetles and Jurassic Seahorse. Thanks for the follows. A Jurassic Seahorse. Did seahorses exist in the Jurassic period, chat? We have, we have astronauts and doctors and lawyers in chat. Do we have any paleontologists? Tell me, tell me there is a paleontologist among you. All right, let's open some omen paths here, huh? Proper restaurants or fast food? Both. I believe they grouped them all together, but we have a lot of both. Oh, I probably... I probably wanted to leave extra red, because I can't mutate Vondrock right now, right? Did the mono blue deck work? It was fine. I don't know that I'd call it good, I would call it fine. 
Wikipedia says the earliest seahorse fossils are 3 million years old. God bless. Twitch username didn't lie to me. Do you have a brazen borrower? I'm thinking about brazenly borrowing me. If they had a borrower, they probably would have smacked me in the face last turn, right? I know a paleontologist if that counts. Close enough. I watched Friends and Ross was a paleontologist. <laughs> That's a great answer. Dino, Dino Dina and Dino Dan were big hits. Big hits in the Hoagland household not long ago as well. None of those are the Vajrak I wanted for Christmas. All right, so at this point, I think we just hold up Sajiri Shelter and then plan to go for it next turn. I think I think with the Shelter and the Good Boy, we probably can't lose here. I'm on Facebook, so I'm an expert in virology, pa paleontology, and soccer. Ah, uh, they cycle the land at end of turn. If you miss that. Gullah Gullah Island. I don't. I don't think that's something I ever watched. Um, it doesn't strike me as. Uh, we didn't have cable in my household growing up. We had network television. We watched a lot of PBS Kids. Was that Nick Jr.? Yeah, definitely, definitely did not did not experience shows on that network. Man, where where are my Vodrocks, Chip? Ask and you shall receive, eh, chat fam? Digimon better than Pokemon 2. Digimon actually just rebooted their paper card game. I really hope they make a digital version at some point. I would love to poke at that on stream. I like that. Like that IP a lot. Saw it coming! Wow, what a monster. Are we thinking about brazenly borrowing me? Because I have a Shijiri shelter. You're diddling my thing. It's activated abilities. I have no activated abilities. I have triggered abilities, about it. Kind of looking for an untapped land here. Nice, nice.
I'm glad I'm glad we're getting to see a game where we like have like a fair a fair game plan with the cat, right? Like a game like this to me, we, people have talked about the black variation of this mutate combo deck and a game like this really highlights the better aspect of what this is doing versus that being able to like just make cat tokens here to stall the board while we wait for our last combo piece afternoon razor beard If we can get to our second Vodrock next turn, we should be in a good spot. Did Obosh just move? It does, it does move. I think this makes the same sound as uh, Wellspring when it comes into play, the moose. Oh no, am I dead? Oh no. Stupid Obosh companion. So, Selfless Savior and Bounty don't actually seem... Bounty's probably fine. Selfless Savior's not actually very good here. Negates and Dispute sound good. Shredded Sails kills Dragon and Henge. Is this a matchup where I want to go, like, full grind here? I don't think so. I think I just want my counter spells. Their, their ability to kill us with Dragon plus Prey Piercer, I think, means I want the game to end sooner rather than later. And a little unfortunate there. It took us half our deck to find our first Vodrock, and then they had a counter and they had a counter for us. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think they've got they've got too much closing power to try and try and grind them out. If you are fans of Historic in the audience, Historic Anthology 4 is releasing tomorrow morning on Arena. My schedule for all, all, all day once that releases tomorrow and then most of Friday we'll be playing some Historic with the new cards. If you're interested in playing in a sweet tournament coming up with those cards with the next Hoaglandia Open, we'll be coming back on March 21st. Sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. They'll be paying out Cool Stuff Inc. store credit. Even if you can't play or don't want to play, we'll be doing coverage of that tournament all day here on stream. Well, to be fair, Logan, they don't go live till 10 a.m. till 10 a.m. Central. So we won't be doing historic till 10 a.m. Central tomorrow. We've already got 23 people signed up. That's sweet. I'm still a week and a half out. Hopefully we have a good, good turnout for it. Although, I guess at the end of the day, so long as we have like 40 or 50 people, I'm happy. Well, one of the things that's nice too, if you're someone that doesn't, doesn't think of yourself as a tournament magic player, that's fine. Casual magic is great. Remember, our tournament series is a great way to poke into something to play pretty casually too. We're not, not a cutthroat environment. First first place prize for our tournament is only $120 in store credit, and we have a very flat prize structure, so everybody that gets at least four match wins gets prizes. We also give out some door prizes. Every, every one of the opens, there is a sweetest deck award. So the, myself and my other caster, who this upcoming event will be Jim Davis, will each pick a deck that we like that got two wins or more to... Uh, to give uh, give a store credit price to. Four match wins out of out of how many? So the Oaklandia tournaments are double elimination. So you play until you take two losses, which is another thing we do that's a little bit different than some other places. You always you always know when when you can be done playing because you won't be able to play anymore. 
There's no, there's no worrying about tiebreakers or top eight cuts. We literally just keep playing magic until someone hasn't lost twice and there's one person left. Uh, deck lists are due the morning before the tournament. Morning, morning of the tournament. He sponsored players like Amy this time. I should, I have not actually reached out to people about looking for their content crews. I put out an open call and didn't have anybody ping me. I should probably manually message some people. Shit. I have taken game actions. Oh, I technically should have looted before I did this because I might have wanted to make an attack here. Small mistake on my part. So we'll, di we'll discard this and if we miss on a mutate, I missed a point of damage. We're out of we're out of cards at this point though, right? Do I even do I even do this here? We're out of we're out of cards at this point. And draw that many plus one. I guess Valakut's Awakening technically lets me re-go, huh? Oh, we could hit um we could loot into um we could have looted into the uh the draw three card as well. This creature mutates, you made you made discard. Okay, and this time I actually want to Valakut first because I might want to Valakut and then and then loot it. Oh, I should have put this one last. Yeah, the, the trigger ordering is so messy with this deck. You really gotta think through it. All right, and then we did brick off here, but we end we end up with, you know, nine power in play here, which is not terrible. If our opponent brazenly borrows our mutation, we get we get a bunch of friends back and can do some stuff again next turn. I don't think I want to play this out as a land. That may or may not be right. We have a baby G Zilla in this pile of Cloud Piercer stuff, so. Erno, thanks for the follow. Good afternoon. Okay, chat, I want you to rate my opponent's turn versus my last turn. What do you what do you think? Can you draw some comparisons here? What do you think of their turn four versus my turn four? They played a fourth land. That's that's true. That's true. They did play a fourth land and we did not. Okay, so I want to cast the omen paths last. So we'll go omen paths last. And then we'll say Valakut, Valakut. Okay, sick. The dream tale here in here should mean should mean that we're good to go. This should this should make it pretty difficult to lose. Is it crazy to put the Titan back with Falcon? It's not actually. In fact, it's just correct to do so because we're going to draw through a lot of our deck here. It 
This, this turn chat has more triggers than a Trump rally that just found out Biden didn't actually steal the election. <laughs> he actually won! People voted for him! Alright, so click this one, we'll click this one. The gold, the gold, the, the machine's gonna spin here for a little bit. The Val, the Val could Awakening, the Val could Awakening is like actually Loki really great in this deck, huh? And this is, this is the one part of the game where I almost feel like I'd prefer, um, I like paper magic would be easier here because you'd just like explain to your opponent what's about to happen to them. And you just like play with your hand face up. It's like, all right, this is this is what I am about to do to you. This combo be faster or slower to execute on Moto? That's a good question. Moto Moto does have auto yield the trigger abilities, which is which is a nice feature. Oh look, my opponent's clock is ticking down. <laughs> That's gotta be the dumbest part of Arena, where like, it starts timing your opponent out while you're taking game actions. Oh, I should have discarded my Valakut. Oh wait, so we'll do this. And we'll do this, and we'll do this. I just, I just have to get back. I just have to get back to my, um, I have to get back to the thing I put on the bottom of my deck at this point, right? What we have to do. They put, I put what's his name on the bottom at one point, the thing that gives haste. Opponent refuses to give up their auto pass equity here. Valakut, flashing back Valakut churns through the deck real quick. Yeah, this isn't gonna isn't gonna take very long here. We should we should get back to it on the next one, I imagine. They're trying to determine the optimal land to crack their passage for it. Yep. Alright, I haven't been doing math, but I'm pretty sure if I bottom everything, we're gonna find what we're looking for at this point, so. <laughs> Doomscar! Are you ready? Doomscar is ready! <laughs> right, we get to draw two. Sorry, moment. <laughs> Uh, ping bonk, ping bonk, ping bonk, ping bonk. That's true. We had we knew the contents of our deck. Valakut, Valakuted it all to the bottom. We could have. We that's true. We could have done more damage here. We could have like cast Omen Pass for extra. We could have made more tokens. Definitely, definitely technically an option. We'll see if they manage to run us down on the draw, huh? 
This is gonna be our last game with this deck. Again, if you didn't catch all this set, we've been playing this for almost two hours. It's gonna end up on my YouTube channel later this evening, along with the two other decks that we played today. We played some blue-white control and standard, as well as some mono blue in historic. We usually play two or three different decks every single day of the week, so there's a lot of a lot of good range of constructed content up there on my YouTube. You can also check out my cardboard live for deck lists. There's deck lists in every video description as well. Chiefy and Hug Monster, thanks for the follows. We're not going to be done streaming for the day, though. We're going to be playing some Mythgard after after this match is done. So a fully digital TCG. I've been enjoying a bit of. So um, I found out I actually can't play in the SCG event this weekend because Christy has plans. Christy, but we have family plans on Sunday that I forgot about when I made my schedule. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stream for a bit on Saturday, but I'm not unfortunately can't play in any tournaments. Can't play in the, the SCG thing since it's a Sunday, Sunday day two. I think Gem Razor can be good in the sideboard if they play Roiling Vortex. Um, sure, I guess. I think I actually just want all of these lands here because, like, I already have Vodrock here, so I think we want to just, like, hit our lands and then Valakut through cards in our deck. But no, even, even if I was playing in SCG tournaments this weekend, I would not be playing something like this. And probably, probably we would be running back the blue-black mutate deck, which I had my, my primer go up for on Cool Stuff Inc. Like the, like the blue-black mutate deck a lot. It's a lot of fun. Hey, that's a nice one. That was some good husband backpedaling. Like, I'd try. The framing, the framing on stuff like that matters. It's, it's important. It's not, it's not just something that she wants to do, it's something I'd like to do too. The whole family's doing it. Nah, that's late, Melodox. Graveyard hate, read. Gosh, we'd have killed him here, huh? Wait, can we still do it? Can we... We can open and then go baby G in to mutate this, right? If they don't have a dispute here? Right? This is four, five, and this is two, three with the baby Gzilla discount? And like our hand is like actually super stacked at the moment to be able to go off here. Like the the dream heron like means we're pretty unlikely to brick off all things considered. Oh, that's real good. We're just, like we're waiting on like a second Vodrock at this point. Yeah, early, early cub here as well. So I can actually see the truth here because the C Dasher Octopus is gonna mute, mutate for just one mana, which is sweet. I'm excited for tomorrow's Anthology 2 Psionic. Thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Wow. What a great, what a great game to end on. 
Some really, really just genuinely impressive stuff from our deck. Ha! Huh, and we hit it again? Alright, yeah, I think I think we just keep I think we do this again here and get the get the mutate looking for. We're looking, we want to find second Fodrock so that way we can start really netting mana when we when we're doing all of this. Because if we get a second Vodrock, we get to flash back to to open the Omen Mask. Oh, you know what? On that second, on that second one, was it? Did we actually see more cards if we would have Valakut it instead? I think that was the case. We would have actually drawn more cards if we would have Valakut it instead. That's fine. You're so lost. Don't be, don't be lost. It's super, super easy. Here, come on, come on a journey with me. So we have a Vodrock on here and Vodrock means every time we cast a, Vodrock means every time we mutate onto this, we get to recast a spell that costs three or less from our discard pile and then open the Omen Paths makes a bunch of mana for us. So basically every time, every time we mutate, we get to make four mana for creatures and all of our mutate things let us keep doing stuff like this. And this is this is how we end the game here. We've got we've got this doom scar. So we're somewhere in this pile. Hold on, I'll show I'll show the mutate pile here in a second. So and this is this is why I wanted why I wanted the second Vondrock, because now I spent three mana to mutate this and I get to make eight mana with it. So we put three mana in and we got eight mana out. What happens here? So this this card has seen some stuff. I feel like I'm obligated to mutate more than nine onto it though. I have 23 cards in my deck. Yeah, I can do at least one more here. Let's see, I want to see what like 10, 10 mutates look like. How much mana do I have? And I can double, I can omen pass for, for, for damage here now. Get up, look it up. Get that extra page in your binder going. Okay, and then we kill them with Doom Scar Titan here. That gives everything one extra attack and haste. Rate my turn four, chat. What do you think? How was my turn four? Six mana goblin bushwhacker. I choose you. <sighs> Messy and complicated. That's a good, that's a good summary. So Reddit was right. This deck is competitive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a, what a buzzkill. Didn't let us hit them. How much damage are we going to do? 26 times 4 is 80, 124, 130, 135. Alright, so we played this for almost two hours. Um... It's amusing. Um, I don't. I don't think this deck is very good. There's. There's the the problem with decks like this is while you do have turn fours like we just had there at the very end, you just have too many moving parts in here to find consistently, and you're just too weak to your opponents interacting with you is a big is a big issue. And like we have some things like selfless savior and bounty and Sajiri shelter, but. Those things are clunky and slow in other spots where your pieces don't come together. I've seen builds that play op, so they give up the protection in order to have more ways to piece their combo pieces together. 
I will say that I think this variation that gets to play Cub Warden is better than the black variation that plays the mutate card that drains them. I think just the, the card quality that Cub Warden brings to the table in the mid-range and aggro matchups where you can like have board presence with the cats to like let you survive to try and find your combo is worth a lot. So I think this deck is sweet. I think randomly attacking for 130 plus on turn four is awesome. And if you're looking to do that on occasion and don't mind getting picked apart by removal on occasion or flubbing out on occasion, this is a sweet deck to play. So definitely great, probably not good.